Good morning and welcome to Storytime. I'm sorry that we can't meet in person, but this will have to do until we can meet together again. Today we are on the letter T. And if you remember, we have been working on the alphabet, but this is a really easy one. Your thumb just kind of tucks under your first finger there. Let's review a little bit. Let's go back to Q. And remember we talked about Q was like pinching or picking something up. So we have Q, then R, S, and then back to T. Our thumb is just peeking out from under that first finger. And now our verse from memory that we have on our Gospel ABC, and you should have a copy of this at home, but the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel from Mark 1, 15. So I know that's a little bit longer for, for some of you younger kids, but maybe the older kids, some of you I know have been already working on this one. There's some other ones that are really good, like this one I love, the heavens declare the glory of God. And that is from Psalm 19, verse 1. And another verse that I feel like everyone should memorize is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. And again, if you're younger, maybe just memorize the first part. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then you older kids can learn the rest of it. Again, you, your moms could um, call the bookstore and you can say it to me. They can take a video text or video and, and send it to my phone. Um, or you can come in person because we will be open again on Friday. So yeah, however you want to do it, but you can work on your memory verses and I'll mark them on your charts for you. Let's go ahead and sit down and mm. we'll read our first book together. The Tea Book. And remember, it's a little boy, so you're going to say, he did. Little T had a box. I will find things that begin with my T sound, he said. I will put them into my sound box. I like toys. I will look for toys. Little T found a toy train on a train track. Did he put the toy train and the track into his box? He did. Little T found a toy tractor. Did he put the toy tractor into the box with the toy train and the track? He did. Then Little T found a truck. He drove that truck up, up, up a tall mountain. He drove to the top, the very tip top. At the top of the tall mountain, he found two turtles. Did he put the two turtles into his box? He did. Then he found a toad. Did he put the toad into the box? He did. Now the box was so full that he could not see over the top. He tripped. He tumbled down, down, down the mountain. He tumbled into a turkey. Turkey feathers flew. So Little T made a turkey feather hat. He and the turkey danced together. Little T found a tambourine. He tapped the tambourine. Tap, 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 tap. Little T found Little T, the turkey, and the toad danced some more. Then he put all of his things into the box. Suddenly, Little T heard a terrific noise. He ran into a tent. <gasps> I wonder what was making that terrific noise. When he looked out, he saw a tiger. The tiger opened its mouth. There were many teeth in the tiger's mouth. I have a loose tooth, said the tiger. Please pull out my tooth. So Little T pulled out the tooth. Thank you, said the tiger. Then Little T and the tiger went inside the tent. They played with all the toys in the box. So we have truck, tractor, tambourine, toad, two turtles, turkey, tent, tiger, and train track with the train. They had a terrific time. 
Okay, I need you to help me with these words. Remember, repeat after me. Telephone, tulip, tray, tricycle, toe, tree, tomato, toothbrush, television, tie, table, top, taco, and teapot. Let's do our search of our own for some tea things. Look behind me. What do you see that starts with tea? I see our tacos and our tortillas, tomato seeds, tubes. We're going to talk about these in a little bit. A tree, telling time, and tulips. And here's a book that shows tongues. I have some homework for you to do. Since we can't be together to have show and tell, I thought maybe you could go around your house and you could make tally marks of things that start with T. Maybe some of these things you have in your house. And so every time you find something that starts with T, you can make a tally mark. So this is something you can do when we're done with story time today. So maybe if you're in your kitchen, Maybe you have tortillas. Maybe you had toast. You made toast in a toaster. Maybe you have a teapot or a teacup. What if we walk down to your bathroom? What's in your bathroom that starts with tea? Right, your toothbrush. And what do you put on your toothbrush? Toothpaste. After a bath or a shower, what do you dry off with? A towel. And then you look down and you had to put on trousers or maybe a t-shirt. And so every time you make a tally mark, you do them like this and they're a group of five. And a little bit later, we're going to talk about how we can count by fives with nickels. But that's five, ten. How many of you are two years old? That starts with T. Raise your hand if you're two. How many of you are three years old? And how many of you are 10 years old? T's kind of fun. He makes three sounds. He goes t, like in two. He goes th, as in three. And his other sound is kind of funny. When he gets with some of his friends, he makes a really different sound that doesn't sound like T at all. Like in the word nation, sh, he sounds like SH. So T can make actually three different sounds. Let's read another book together. Let's look at this one about tongues. It's kind of interesting. Cats use their tongues to clean themselves. Mammals, birds, and most fish have tongues. A giraffe can stick its tongue out very far to eat leaves off trees. Certain animals use their tongues not only to eat their dinner, but to catch it. Anteaters and aardvarks pick up ants, termites, or grubs with their long, sticky tongues. And of course, it's really fun to watch a chameleon. That might be a fun video to pull up. A frog or toad can zap a fly with its tongue. Reptiles also have tongues. Snakes can even smell with their tongues. A snake's tongue is forked. Its ends are split in two. So it's kind of cool to see how God made all different kinds of tongues. Our next book is called A Tree is Nice. And right now as it's starting to heat up and summer is turning or spring is turning into summer, it's nice to have trees for shade. Trees are very nice. They fill up the sky. They go beside the rivers and down the valleys. They live up on the hills. Trees make the woods. They make everything beautiful. Even if you have just one tree, it is nice too. A tree is nice because it has leaves. The leaves whisper in the breeze all summer long. 
In the fall, the leaves come down and we play in them. We walk in the leaves and roll in the leaves. We build playhouses out of the leaves and then we pile them up with our rakes and have a bonfire. Well, we don't do that anymore, but that's what we used to do. A tree is nice because it has a trunk and limbs. We can climb the tree and see over all the yards. We can sit on a limb and think about things or play pirate ship up in the tree. When my kids were little, they would take a book and read up in the tree. If it is an apple tree, we can climb it to pick the apples. Cats get away from dogs by going up the tree. Birds build nests in trees and live there. Sticks come off the trees too. We draw in the sand with the sticks. A tree is nice to hang a swing in or a basket of flowers. It's a good place to lean your hoe while you rest. I noticed somebody in my neighborhood had hung a swing from their tree this morning. A tree is nice because it makes shade. The cows lie down in the shade when it is hot. People have picnics there too, and the baby takes his nap in his buggy in the shade. It looks like some other people are napping too. A tree is nice for a house to be near. The tree shades the house and keeps it cool. Can you see someone else's little house there too? He's getting shaded. The tree holds off the wind and keeps the wind from blowing the roof off the house sometimes. A tree is nice to plant. You dig the biggest hole you can and put the little tree in and then you pour in lots of water and then the dirt. You hang the shovel back in the garage. Every day for years and years you watch the little tree grow and you say to people, I planted that tree. They wish they had one, so they go home and plant a tree, too. One of the things we've done at Storytime normally this time of year is to plant seeds. And I thought that might be a kind of a fun thing that we could all do together. If you have an empty egg carton at your house, it's kind of fun to start your seeds in here. Maybe it's tomato seeds, or maybe it's bean seeds, or something else. Or maybe you want to start some flowers. And so you can put dirt in here and put your seed in. And then once you see you've got a little seedling coming up, then you can plant it outside. I've got some games for you to play. We talked about that you're going to have a scavenger hunt for tea things. Another thing I would like you to do is have some fun games with things that we normally would have done here. Remember how we normally have some games using tongs when we get to letter T? So that would be kind of fun. Maybe you could come up with some things and have an egg carton. And you have to pick up some objects. Cotton balls are easy, but maybe we could pick up nickels. And we do, we run with it or walk with it and then put it in our egg carton. And then when we fill it, we can count by fives. So let me just put a couple more in. And let's count by fives, just like those tally marks. Five, ten, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And maybe you could make a long line and get all the way to 100. So learning to count by fives is a really good skill. Another thing, another game that you could play, which we have done every year, and maybe we'll have to do it if we get to meet again, is remember we've done our tortilla toss. Kind of like a frisbee. And you could see how far your tortilla travels. Who could throw it the farthest? I don't know about you, but I always have some stale tortillas in my house, so maybe do a tortilla toss game with your family. And another thing with the tubes, I've seen on Pinterest people making things out of tubes, like butterflies and caterpillars are putting them together and telescopes. That would be fun to see the stars. Or maybe you're really creative. You could come up with something else. And again, you could show me. Okay, I got to get a big breath for this next book. Do you remember this book? Ticky Ticky Tembo. Oh, this is a hard book to read. But we'll try it together. Maybe you could practice at home and then you can say it to me. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, it was the custom of all the fathers and mothers in China to give their first and honored sons great long names. 
but second sons were given hardly any name at all. It was a small village. There lived a mother who had two little sons. Her second son she called Chang, which meant little or nothing. But her first and honored son she called Tiki Tiki Tembo No Sa Rembo Charibari Ruchi Pip Pari Pembo, which meant the most wonderful thing in the whole wide world. Every morning the mother went to wash in the little stream near her home. The two boys always went chattering along with her. On the bank was an old well. Don't go near the well, warned the mother, or you will surely fall in. The boys did not always mind their mother, and one day they were playing beside the well and on the well when Chang fell in. Tiki Tiki Timbo, no sa rembo, chadabari ruchi, pit pari pembo, ran as fast as his little legs could carry him to his mother and said, Most honorable mother, Chang has fallen into the well. The water roars, little blossom. I cannot hear you, said the mother. Then Tiki Tiki Timbo, no sa rembo, chadabari ruchi, pit pari pembo, raised his voice and cried, Oh, most honorable one, Chang has fallen into the well. That troublesome boy, answered the mother, run and get the old man with the ladder to fish him out. So Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Sa Rumbo, Charabata Ruchi, Pip Pari Pembro ran to the old man with the ladder to help get his brother out of the well. And they ran as fast as his legs could carry him, step over step, step over step. He went into the well, picked up little Chang, and step over step, step over step, brought him out of the well. He pumped the water out of him and pushed the air into him, pumped the water out of him, pushed the air into him, and soon Chang was just as good as ever. Now, for several months, the boys did not go near the well, but after the festival of the eighth moon, they ran to the well to eat their rice cakes. They ate near the well. They played around the well. They walked down the well, and Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Sa Rembo, Charibata Ruchi, Pip Pari Pembo, fell into the well. Chang ran as fast as his little legs could carry him to his mother and said, Oh, most honorable mother, Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Sa Rembo, Charibata Ruchi, Pip Pari Pembo, has fallen into the well. The water roars, little one. I cannot hear you. So little Chang took a deep breath. Oh, most honorable mother, he panted. Tiki Tiki Timbo, no sa rembo, charabari ruchi, pit pari pembo, has fallen into the well. Tiresome child, what are you trying to say, said his mother. Honorable mother, charibari charabari, tiki tiki, he gasped, pip pip has fallen into the well. Unfortunate son, surely the evil spirits have bewitched your tongue. Speak your brother's name with reverence. Poor little Chang was all out of breath from saying that great long name. He didn't think he could say it one more time. But then he thought of his old bro of his brother in the old well. Chang bowed his little head clear to the sand, took a deep breath, and slowly, very slowly said, Most honorable mother, Tiki Tiki Tembo, No Sa Rembo, Charibari Ruchi, Pip Peri Pembo is at the bottom of the well. Not my first and honored son, heir of all I possess. Run quickly, tell the old man with the ladder that your brother has fallen into the well. So they ran to the old man and told him, and they had a hard time waking him up, but finally they got him to wake up and carry his ladder. And they have to carry, go down the hill, over the bridge, over to the well. The old man with the ladder hurried as fast as his old legs could carry him. Step over step, step over step, he went into the well. And step over step, step over step, out of the well with the little boy in his arms. Then he pumped the water out of him and pushed the air into him, pumped the water out of him and pushed the air into him. But little Tiki Tiki Timbo, No Sa Rembo, Chari Bari Ruchi, Pip Pari Pembo had been in the water so long, all because of his great long name, that the moon rose many times before he was quite the same again. And from that day to this, the Chinese have always thought it wise to give all their children little short names instead of great long names. So that is a very long name. And so I'm glad I don't have that name. And I'm glad you don't have that name. I would have a hard time saying your name every time you came to story time. But also we learned that we should listen to our moms and dads and not play in places they told us not to. Okay, so let's review. You have some homework to do. So you're going to do a scavenger hunt looking for tea things and make tally marks. And then you can count by fives. And you can maybe plant some seeds and see how tall they grow. 
you can make some things out of tubes. And I know some of you had picked up your spring book before we broke for spring break. And so maybe you could be writing in your spring book. Or some of you that might not have been here can pick one of those up as well. And of course, be working on memorizing God's Word. Let's pray. And we're going to end. And then we're going to tack on one more story after you've gotten some wiggles out. It's a really fun story about a boy who was kind of bored. But he found some things to do. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for each of these kids. We miss being together, and we miss doing some of the things that we did. But help us to spend time with you, grow stronger in you, and help us to memorize your word. And may it be a strong tower that we run to. And I love these kids. Amen. Welcome back. Hopefully you got your wiggles out, or maybe you had some lunch or something. But I love this book, and I think you'll see why after we read it. It's always important to read why someone wrote a book, and so in the very front, he talks a little bit about it, how he used to spend um, his summers with grandparents, and how he and his dad once actually found an old raft. I like what he says at the end. This story is a little bit about all of those things, a summer in the woods, a special grandparent, and becoming a river rat, and becoming an artist. And so we're going to look at these beautiful illustrations, but it's a beautiful story. There's nobody to play with, I complained. She doesn't even have a TV. Dad grinned. Well, she's not your normal kind of grandma, I guess, he said. Calls herself a river rat, he chuckled. But I promise she'll find plenty for you to do. And you know, I can't take you with me this summer, Nikki. There'll be no kids there, and I'll be spending all my time at the plant. I felt tears starting again, but I blinked hard and looked out the window. That afternoon, I stood in Grandma's yard and watched my dad drive away. Dust rose up behind our car as it disappeared into the pines. Well, we can't stand here all summer, said Grandma. Come on, Nikki, it's time for supper. Honey or maple syrup on your cornbread, Grandma asked. I don't like cornbread, I mumbled, poking my finger into the syrup pitcher while she wasn't looking. If you're going to do that, you better wash first, she said. She had eyes in the back of her head. Bathroom's through there. I pushed the doorway curtain aside and walked into what would have been a living room in anyone else's house. Books were scattered everywhere, on the tables, on the chairs, even on the floor. Three of the walls were cluttered with sketches and stuffed fish and charts of the river. Several fishing poles hung from the fourth with a tackle box, a snorkel, and a mask on the floor beneath them. It looked like a river rat's workroom, all right, except that in the middle of everything was a half finished carving of a bear. Been carving that old fellow for years, Grandma called from the kitchen. The real one hangs out at the dump. Now come get your supper before I feed it to him. Dad was right. Grandma found plenty for me to do. In the morning, I stacked firewood, then helped her clean out the rain gutters and change the spark plugs on her truck. The afternoon was almost over when she handed me a cane pole, a bobber, and some real worms. Fish fry tonight, she said, showing me how to bait the hook. That river's full of fat bluegills. Drop your line near the lily pads and you'll find them. Down at the dock, I looked things over. The lily pads were too close to shore. There couldn't be fish there. I walked to the end of the dock and threw my line out as far as I could. Then I sat down to wait and wait and wait. My bobber never moved. There's no fish in this river, I said out loud, disgusted. We had hamburgers for supper. Hmm, I wonder why he didn't believe his grandma and put his hook down by the lily pads. Give it another try, said grandma the next evening. I'll bet you catch something. Don't count on it, I thought as I headed back to the dock. I threw my line in the water, then I stretched out on the dock to wait. I must have fallen asleep because I was awakened by loud chirping and chattering. I sat up and looked around. A flock of birds was moving toward me along the river, hovering over something floating on the water. It drifted downstream closer and closer until finally it bumped up against the dock. Though it was covered with leaves and branches, now I could tell that it was a raft. What was it doing floating down the river all by itself, I wondered. I reached down and pushed some of the leaves aside. Beneath them was a drawing of a rabbit. It looked like those ancient cave paintings I'd seen in the books. Just outlines, but wild and fast and free. 
I cleaned away more leaves and it was like finding presents under the Christmas tree. A bear, a fox, a raccoon, all with the wild look of the rabbit. Who had drawn them, I wondered. Where had the raft come from? I ran up to the cottage. Grandma was on the porch reading. Do you have some rope I can use, I asked. In the shed, hon, she said, help yourself. She didn't ask me what I needed it for, and I decided not to tell her yet. I pushed the raft into the reeds along the river's edge, and then I tied it to the dock so it wouldn't drift away. All the while, birds flew over my head, every now and then swooping down to the raft as if it were a friend. A crane waded through the reeds to it. A turtle swam up from the bottom of the river. The moon had risen yellow over the river by the time I went up to the cottage to go to bed. I was already down at the dock the next morning when Grandma appeared with a little with a life jacket and a long pole. She didn't seem surprised by the raft at all, or by the animal pictures all over, all over it. How did you know I started? Let's go, Grandma interrupted, tossing me the life jacket and stepping onto the raft. She pushed the pole hard into the river bottom and we moved smoothly into the current. Your turn, she said after a few minutes. She showed me how to hold the pole and push and I pulled us to the middle of the river. Even there, the water wasn't over my head. We pulled the raft up the river, then let it slowly drift back down. The birds kept us company the whole time, soaring, swooping, singing. Some even landed on the raft and rode with us for a while. Hitchhikers, Grandma called them. After that, I had a little time for any. After that, I had a little time for anything but the raft. I raced through whatever chores there were then ran down to the dock, wondering what animals I'd see that day. It wasn't just birds that the raft attracted. One morning, three raccoons followed me along the shore. Another time, a turtle climbed on board and spent the morning sunning itself. And one afternoon, I saw a family of foxes slip through the trees along the river. When the weather turned too hot and sticky to sleep indoors, Grandma helped me put up a small tent on the raft. I lay on top of the cool sheets and read comic books by flashlight until I fell asleep. One night, a noise woke, a noise woke me up. There in the moonlight stood a huge buck. He looked right at me, then lowered his head to drink as if I wasn't there at all. I found Grandma the next morning working on her bear carving. Do you have some extra paper I could draw on, I asked her. She brought out a big sketch pad and a pouch filled with thick pencils and crayons. I've been saving these just for you, she said. Better take these too. She held out the snorkel and mask. Never know when they might come in handy on a raft. The sun was hot that afternoon, so I poked into the shade of the willow and then waited to see what animals the raft would bring. It wasn't long before a great blue heron whooshed down with a crayfish in its bill. I grabbed a pencil and began to sketch. I felt invisible as the bird calmly ate its lunch right in front of me. Then it preened its feathers, looked back up the river, and flew off. That night, I showed my drawing to Grandma. Not bad, she said. Not bad at all. And she tacked it on the wall on top of one of her own sketches. One day, I pulled up river further than I'd ever been, near a clump of tall cattails. I startled an otter family. They dove underwater, but as with the other animals, the raft seemed to calm them down. Soon they were playing all around me. Grandma had been right about the mask and the snorkel coming in handy. I slipped them on, then hung my head over the raft and watched the otters play, chasing fish, chasing, chasing each other, sometimes just chasing their own tails. I kept very still. They didn't seem to mind me watching. They played keep away with a small stone, then tug of war with a piece of rope. It was like they were showing off for me. They even let me feed them right out of my hand. Some mornings, Grandma would make a bag full of sandwiches and a thermos of icy lemonade. Then we'd put on our bathing suits and grab some towels, a lawn chair and an inner tube, and pull up river to her favorite swimming spot. I've come swimming here since I was a girl, she told me when we tied the raft to an old dock. The marshals used to live here, all ten of them. What a herd of wild animals we were. 
While Grandma watched from the inner tube, I practiced my flying cannonballs. Then we'd eat our lunch, and she'd tell me stories about growing up on the river. My favorite was of the time she found a small black pearl inside a river clam. I still have it, she said. Somehow on the river, it seemed like summer would never end, but of course it did. On my last day, I got up extra early and crept down to the dock. The air was cool and a low pearly fog hung over the river. I untied the raft and quietly drifted downstream. Ahead of me through the fog, I saw two deer moving across the river, a doe and her fawn. When they reached the shore, the doe leaped easily over the steep bank, then turned to wait for her baby. But the fawn was in trouble. He kept slipping down the muddy bank. The doe returned to the water to help, but the, the more the fawn struggled, the deeper it got stuck in the mud. I pushed off the river bottom and drove the raft hard onto the muddy bank, startling the doe. Then I dropped into the water. I was ankle deep in mud. You're okay, I whispered to the fawn, praying the raft would calm it. I won't hurt you. Gradually, the fawn stopped struggling. As if it understood that I was there to help, I put my arms around it and pulled. It barely moved. I pulled again, then slowly, slowly the fawn eased out of the mud, and finally it was free. Carefully, I carried the fawn up the bank to its mother. Then quietly, I returned to the raft. From there, I watched the gnome nuzzle and clean her baby, and I knew what I had to do. I pulled the stub of a crayon from my pocket and drew the fawn in all its wildness onto the gray boards of the raft. When I finished, I knew it was just right. After supper, I showed Grandma my drawing of the fawn and told her my story. It's perfect, she said, but we need to do one more thing. She hurried up to the cottage, and when she came back, she had tubes of oil paint and two paintbrushes. Grandma helped me trace my drawing with the oil paint, which soaked deep into the wood. That'll keep it, she said. Now you'll always be a part of the river. Just like you, Grandma, I told her, a river rat. Grandma laughed, just like me. She agreed. I love how in that story the boy found out that he liked to draw. And sometimes we're so busy doing other things or maybe so busy watching TV or playing on computers, we don't realize that there's some things that we can do. So I hope maybe you can find some paper and pencils and try to draw something. And I would love to hang those up at the bookstore too. So I hope you enjoyed this book and we'll see you next week for the letter U. See you then. Bye.